Hi everyone. Today we're going to be going over a simple origami butterfly. In order to get any piece of origami started, you are going to need a square piece of paper. You might think that you don't have any specifically square paper or any origami materials around the house, especially because right now it's difficult to run out and just buy any craft supplies that you might need. So I encourage you to look around in your closets, in your desk drawers, and see what you can come up with. I have even been cutting uh, gift wrapping paper down into squares using the grids on the back. You can even take something as large as construction paper and just cut it into a square by folding up to the straight edge and cutting off the excess. I will tell you right now that if you use construction paper or printer paper or something that is large, you will end up with a very large butterfly. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get started. I am gonna use um, actual origami paper. I'm lucky that I have some here at home with me. Uh, but one of the reasons origami paper is great for teaching is that it has two different colored sides. So the pretty colored side and then the white side. And this makes it a lot easier to follow the folds that we're doing. So as with any origami project, what you do to one side or once you do once, you're going to do again a second time. So don't worry about falling behind. Um, if you see me do it once, you can know what the next step is going to be as well. And you can catch up there. And feel free to pause the video at any point in time if you uh, need to catch up on some folds there. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to take this point of our square, fold it up to that point of our square, and make one great big triangle. I like to go down the center to my fold. I don't know if that's better or not. I just feel like it's a little bit easier. And make sure you get a really nice crease on there. I've seen some people uh, use popsicle sticks to smooth out their creases or even the handles of butter knives, but I'm just gonna go ahead and use my fingertips. Now we're gonna unfold it, go back to that white starting page, and we are going to rotate our paper and do another large triangle fold. So the reason that we do all these little folds when we start origami is these are quite literally our guidelines. By putting in these lines now, it makes the actual shaping of the paper easier when we do the last few steps of the project. All right, and there's another triangle. Put it back up, you can see we have an X going through our paper. Now we're gonna go ahead and add some more guidelines and we're gonna fold our paper in half. I will say I'm not a very precise origami folder, uh, but the more precise you are in folding your guidelines, the neater your final project comes out. So if you wanna take some extra time on this once you have the pattern down, please do. I've certainly made about seven or eight butterflies by now and I luckily have the pattern memorized which makes it a lot easier. And then, since we've done one, we're gonna go ahead and do a second fold in half. Oop, there we go. You can see we're making a lot of guidelines through our paper and open it back up again. So now we have our piece of paper cut into pieces, kind of like a pie. And we're gonna do uh, a fold where we take the corners and bring them into the center. Okay, so this corner we're gonna fold into the middle, make a little triangle. It kind of looks like uh, once you get through a couple folds, you'll realize this kind of makes it look like we're making an envelope. Um, I'm not sure if this is how you would make an envelope using origami, but I imagine it's probably pretty similar. And we're going to fold in our next one. And I know normally in origami we stop at two folds, but we're going to do all four edges into the middle. And I'm really trying to get a good crease because as we fold this more compactly, if your creases are really wide, it's going to make your butterfly a little bit thicker. Um, all right, and yeah, do your best to match it up. Pull it down the middle, and I'm going to go out to the sides. Excellent. So 
So now we have a cute little gift box and we're gonna go ahead and undo it all. Open our piece of paper back up. Now what we're gonna do this time is we are going to um, fold this edge into the middle and then you guessed it, we'll fold this edge into the middle, kind of making like a, a pamphlet fold. So, one flat edge into the middle. Increase it really well. And turn it around. And take one fold into the middle. And crease it really well. So the good news is, is we are now done with those inside guidelines and we're just going to work with the pretty blue part of the paper now. In order to get started on the body of our butterfly, we're going to take this edge and fold it into the center. Oh, and you can see I've got a little bit of white sticking up there because of my folds. I'm not worried about it. And turn it around. Same thing on this side. Nice, solid creases. Excellent. So now this part looks a little bit difficult. You might have to kind of uh, encourage the paper to fold this way, uh, but once you do it once, you're gonna see it's actually a lot easier than you think it is. We're wanting to open up our square just a smidge, grab one of the original corners of our large sheet of paper and kind of pull this inner piece out so it goes off to the corner. So you can see this edge that was once tucked all the way down there is now just coming up and folding with the middle section, okay? And you guessed it. Go ahead and do that same thing to the other side. So I open them up a little bit. I like to grab my corner and I like to just gently pull the fold out. Cool. All right, and now that you've done it once, flip that bad boy over and do it to these ones. Grab that corner and gently pull and fold things back in. Yeah, there we go. Last corner. Oh, that one was an easy one. All right, take a little bit of time. Make sure you've still got some nice flat creases, okay? Now what I would like you to do is fold that in half. Make sure that all of these open pieces, um, all of the openings into the paper where you can see the white or the inside of your butterfly, that's facing up towards the top. That'll help hide those um, when we do our finer, final butterfly folds, okay? So now we are actually going to start to give our butterfly some shape and we're gonna fold its wings out. So we want to take this corner, which is just this top layer of paper, and fold it across the middle, opening up these other two layers so you can see that nice pretty blue or that nice pretty solid color top layer, and crease it on down. And then we're going to do the same thing, taking just that top layer of the fold, so here's the top, here's the middle, there's that bottom layer, and just folding it to a different orientation, and we have now made the wings of our butterfly. So there's our top wings and there's our bottom wings. In order to give our butterfly a little bit of shape, we are gonna go ahead and fold these corners in just a little bit. We're not gonna go all the way to the middle. We're gonna take one quarter at a time, and this is totally to preference on how you want your butterfly to look and how you want it sized. I literally just make it up every single time, just kind of however the paper wants to work. And you notice that I'm not lining up those lines or anything. I'm just folding this top layer in just a smidge. So if you can have an, uh, a thicker butterfly, you can fold it really far and have a narrow butterfly. Um, I tend to like a little bit of a thicker butterfly because it keeps some of that bulk of the paper out of the center for the rest of my folding. So if we flip this over, we can see a little bit more of a shape is happening here. Um, we've got wings, we've got a defined uh, bottom wing, and now what I want everyone to do is this is the pretty top of our butterfly where we can't see these edge folds. So the pretty top of our butterfly, go ahead and fold it in half so everything is nice and symmetrical. This is where we're going to create the bump 
that lets our butterfly rest on surfaces. So I'm gonna grab one of my examples off here to the side. It kind of looks like the center of a paper airplane where you fold a V into the middle. This is the original center line of my paper. So what used to be like this, from there folded the wings down, okay? So we are gonna go ahead and take this and we wanna fold, we want this to stay in the middle and we wanna fold our wings down, okay? So the way that I like to do it is I, I kind of wanna end up with it leaving this tail piece as free as possible um, so that I'm not creasing that. So I'm gonna try and base it off of this top block. So we're gonna go from this corner of the block and fold at an angle. I'm not gonna lie, this is the hardest part of the butterfly, but you can see I went from this back corner just up to a random spot in the middle of the butterfly. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side where I find that top corner, hold it in place, and just add a little crease. Okay? I know that that uh, this last fold can be done either from the top to the bottom, or you can fold it in half with the wings going downward, and then fold up. That's just however you wanna do it, if you wanna fold from top to bottom, or if you wanna fold from bottom to top. There we go. And now we have a beautiful finished butterfly. And there we have some beautiful finished butterflies. You can see that construction paper butterfly that I made is He's big, he's huge, he's more like a moth, but he's still very pretty. So feel free to use whatever you need to make this happen in your house, but uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and tape these up in my office and uh, add a little bit of spring to my office decor. So thanks guys, have a good rest of the day.